Costello, thank you for talking to Frank Rowan Dot TV. Now you're the father and the trainer of Thomas Costello, a young professional coming into his seventh fight on October the 31st at the Aston Villa Leisure Centre. I want to start by asking you, is it difficult or how difficult is it being the trainer of your own son? Um, we have our moments, but uh, Thomas is a good lad. He's me, he's me pal, really. Not just my son, he's me pal. So uh, it's, it's not that deep. We have our moments, but uh, no, he's... It's, we get on fine. Do you look at some of the famous father-son boxing relationships, Joe Calzaghe, Enzo Calzaghe, and maybe more recently, it's, you know, Nicky Cook, WBO super featherweight champion, and his father, Paul Cook. Do you look at them and sort of, it's it's obviously somewhere you want to go? Yeah, I look at them very closely, actually. I mean, I look at Enzo, um, and he was, in the, he was fortunate fortunate enough to share the uh, share the dressing room with Paul and Nick at the XL back in February. And uh, it's very, very. I, I, just looking at them, I can see uh, so many similarities. I mean, I watch Enzo, and he's, you know, he's he's, uh, he's full of beans. I see his legs shaking before the base, and that's exactly how I am. I, I, I wear all Thomas's nerves, and I can see Enzo does that with Joe Calzaghe, and I see it with Nick, Nicky Cooks, uh, Dad Paul, and they know what they're like. We know what our lads can do, but uh, at the same time, you 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 just want them to perform, mm. and it's it is nerve wracking. What are the difficulties of of uh being the trainer of your son because obviously you're with them in the boxing gym most of the time but then you go home with it so there's no break between you can it get difficult can it get a little too stressful sometimes yeah sometimes I mean Thomas might run out to the car to get someone out of the boat <laughs> and um, he might not put a put a jumper on and uh, you know Thomas put a jumper on you'll catch a chill just silly things mm. like you know and if I wasn't there I wouldn't be uh, yeah. I wouldn't be that pain in the backside and I, sometimes I feel like a bit of a pain in the backside to be, to be candid with you <laughs> How good do you think he is? Um, I think Thomas, I really do think Thomas is uh, he's coming through the back door. And um, only people that have worked with him closely and, and seen him sparring, I mean, you know, I mean, I took him out to New York at 18. Uh, he sparred with Paul Emanuel Nadji um, for a week. Um, and Paul Emanuel Nadji was in pre uh, preparation for his t uh, IBF title shot. He'd love more and do. And Paul Emanuel Nadji uh, said after the, after the sparring, um, he was that pleased with the spine. He said that kid will be world champion one day. I can't believe how young he is. And everybody he's gone in with, uh, he's been in with umpteen fighters. They've said they've said similar things. Uh, I mean, Thomas is a Thomas is a very very young kid, um, and that's what's so exciting about him. Mm. I really do think the kid's going to go all the way. But we, you know, we've got to got to keep our foot in the ground, keep chipping away. And as Thomas has already said, you know, we can't try and rush things. We've got to learn by others' mistakes. I've seen a lot of talented kids fall by the way, so we're trying to rush it and not listening to the people around them. So we just want to keep it nice and steady. And as long as we do that and listen to the people around us, definitely all the way. There has been a lot of criticism lately about when boxers come out of the amateurs because of the scoring system within the amateurs and what you need to do now to score and win, that when uh, these young gentlemen turn professional, they're very upright, they don't move their head very much, and it's almost teaching all those sort of skills that before you would have learnt in the amateurs. Is there any truth in that? I think you've hit the nail on the head. Uh, that's exactly what it is. Um, Thomas turned pro at 18, and Thomas had an international career in front of him. He was told that. He was told that by Teddy Edwards. Um, they wanted to bring. He was, he was picked on GB at 64. He could no longer make 64, um, so they wanted to bring him through at 69. He knew uh, because of the, because of the situation, uh, Beijing was going to be a long shot for him. And um, he said, "Dad, I can't be hanging around till I'm 22, playing tic tac, because that's what we called it, mm -hmm. four twos tic tac." Mm -hmm. And I agreed with him. Uh, I think the current amateur system uh, and the scoring system. He's, he's no grounding for a professional career. They're changing it back in February, and I think that's that's uh, that's going to be great. It'll certainly sort the sort sort the boys and the men, but um, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think uh, I think um, the amateurs is no preparation for the pros at all. So based on that, how difficult has it been, or is it uh, for trainers taking on the amateurs and turning them into professionals to sort of almost iron that out and teach them to the professional way? How difficult can it be? I think very difficult because you, you have got a lot of kids will come into the pros, uh, immensely talented kids, but they're immensely talented picking up points and, and running. Uh, in the pros, uh, you know, unless you're you know, a poorly man and you can run for 12 rounds um, and you're exceedingly tough. It's very, very hard for a kid uh, to bring that, bring that stall into the pros. You've got to change it and some can't do it.
Finally, what about a word here on the boxing scene in Birmingham? Obviously, we're here at the Chumsleywood ABC uh, Club, but uh, in all, there's a good up-and-coming boxers in the Birmingham scene. I mean, how proud are you of this area? Oh, I'm immensely proud. I mean, we've got Frankie Gavin, who's a very good friend of Thomas's. Uh, he's been, he was a massive help to us. Thomas has done a countless rounds of sparring. Mean, he's been a massive help to us through Thomas's amateur career. Big influence on Thomas. Little Don, another cracking little kid. Matty Macklin. We've got, you know, we've got kids like Cali Sir and Young Gamble coming through. Obviously, me little fella, Joe. We, we, you know, massively talented city. It's massive for Birmingham. Um, yeah, I'm immensely proud. I really am. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Connor.